A pole stands 60 feet tall. An angle theta is formed when wires of various lengths of x feet are attached from the ground to the top of the pole as shown in the following diagram. So we have a pole height of 60 feet, a wire length of x feet, and the angle theta would be the angle of elevation. We're asked to find the rate of change of the angle theta, which is d theta dx, when a wire of 100 feet is attached. So notice how we do have a right triangle here, where in relation to the angle theta, the pole height is the opposite side, and the wire length is the hypotenuse, and therefore sine theta is equal to 60 divided by x. But because we're trying to find d theta dx, we need to write theta as a function of x, and therefore we need to solve the equation for theta by taking the inverse sine of both sides of the equation. Simplifying on the left, inverse sine of sine theta is equal to theta, giving us theta equals inverse sine of 60 divided by x. So now that we have theta as a function of x, we can determine d theta dx. But notice how when differentiating inverse sine of 60 divided by x with respect to x, we will have to apply the chain rule where the inner function u is 60 divided by x. So if we have u equals 60 divided by x, which we can write as 60 times x to the power of negative one, we know we need to determine u prime, which is a derivative of 60 x to the power of negative one with respect to x, which is negative 60 times x to the power of negative two, or if we want negative 60 divided by x squared. So now we can differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x, which gives us the theta dx, or theta prime, equals the derivative of inverse sine u with respect to x, which is equal to one divided by the square root of the quantity one minus u squared times u prime, which in our case is one divided by the square root of the quantity one minus the square of 60 divided by x, and then times u prime, which gives us times negative 60 divided by x squared. Let's see if we can simplify this. We have theta prime equals, in the numerator we have one times negative 60, which is negative 60. In the denominator we have x squared times the square root of the quantity one minus 3,600 divided by x squared. Now we could leave the derivative in this form here, but it'll be more simplified if we clear the fraction from under the square root. Now first, we know x is always positive because it's the length of the wire. So if x is always positive, the square root of x squared is equal to x. If we didn't know x was positive, we would have the absolute value of x here. But what this is telling us is we can take one factor from the x squared outside the square root and place it under the square root. And when we do this, it becomes x squared. So we can write the derivative function as negative 60 divided by one factor of x times the square root of x squared times the quantity one minus 3,600 divided by x squared. Now the reason we might wanna do this is notice how when we distribute the x squared under the square root, we just have x squared minus 3,600 and it clears the fraction from under the square root. So let's write the derivative as theta prime equals negative 60 divided by the product of x and the square root of the quantity x squared minus 3,600. Again, this isn't required, but you can see it is more simplified in this form. So now we can determine theta prime of 100 by substituting 100 for x, which gives us negative 60 divided by the product of 100 and the square root of the square of 100 minus 3,600. And now let's go to the calculator. Notice the exact value in decimal form is negative 0 0.0075, or as a fraction, negative 3 four hundredths. So we have negative 3 four hundredths radians per foot as a fraction or negative 0.0075 radians per feet as a decimal. And again, the question does say round, round the answer to five decimal places, which doesn't apply here because we have the exact value 
to four decimal places. Negative 0.0075 radians per foot. I hope you found this helpful.